Edgar the Dance Man The sun shone through the blinds and I woke up with a yawn and a stretch. As I got out of bed and went over to the window, I just couldn't help but smile. Silence, just the way I like it. Nothing but a few birds chirping, and in the far distance, the cars going by. If I can spend a whole day in silence, then, let me tell you, I'm a happy man. I have my shower in peace, brush my teeth in peace, and eat my breakfast completely in peace. After all, there was no need to rush. Not today, anyway. It had been two days since I'd lost my last job, and my plan today was to start thinking about looking for another one. Well, I was going to think about thinking of one. A day off every now and then is never a bad thing. I felt bad and stressed out, obviously, but I was also used to this happening by now. In the past year, I've had five different jobs, and they've all ended the same way. With my boss calling me into the office, telling me that we both knew why I was there, and then saying, in the simplest way possible, He's just not going to work, I'm afraid. As ever, I'd already had one day of moping around, feeling sorry for myself and worrying about my debts that were growing faster than ever. But then, after a good night's sleep, I woke refreshed and full of energy again. All it takes is one good sleep, and then I realise that this is a good chance for a fresh start. Another fresh start, that is. The fifth one this year, to be exact. I put on the radio as I have my coffee. Only the news, of course. And open up my laptop to see if there are any jobs I can apply for. After all, there's no time like the present, and the most exciting part is this very moment, when my next job could be absolutely anything. Yeah, that's right, I thought. This is a good thing. Today could be the day that I found my dream job. I could be a lion tamer, an aeroplane pilot, a racing driver, or a... And then it happened. The same thing that happens every day, at least once. Sometimes I can make it to lunchtime, or early afternoon. Sometimes it happens first thing in the morning. Sometimes I wake up and it's happening already. This time, it was an advert on the radio. It was advertising a new type of car, and right at the end was a little musical jingle. But that was all the time it took. First my foot started tapping, then immediately my hips started swaying. I quickly put my coffee cup down, just as my arms started to jiggle up and down with the rhythm. And before I knew it, and before the 10 second advert was even over, there I was, in the middle of the kitchen, throwing my limbs about and dancing like it was my birthday. I was jumping, swaying and spinning like crazy, until the advert ended and the newsreader returned and I, well, I did what I usually do, took a deep breath, dusted myself down and carried on as if nothing had happened. Just another reminder that it can happen just when I least expect it. So, you've probably guessed by now that I'm not exactly like other people. I have a sort of condition, if that's what you want to call it. It's the reason I can't hold down a job, the reason I don't have a girlfriend, and the reason that I'm on my fifth fresh start this year. I'm Edgar, the Dance Man. Whenever I hear even the tiniest, quietest bit of music, I dance. Not because I want to, or because the rhythm just takes me, but because I can't stop myself. It's sort of like an allergic reaction. Every single time, no matter what kind of music it is, my whole body immediately starts to move, and there is not a single thing I can do about it. 
I'm a good dancer, thankfully, but that's not really the point. I could be the best dancer in the world, but when my manager at the library sees me dancing instead of stacking books on the shelves, that's not exactly what they want to pay me for. It's the reason I've lost so many jobs. So, now I've got that off my chest, I'm sure you understand now why I like a peaceful start to the day. I used to love music, but now I avoid it as much as possible. If you danced every time you heard any kind of music at all, I'm sure you would try to avoid it too. And I know you're probably thinking, it can't be that hard to find a job that won't involve any music playing. But let me tell you, it's harder than you think. It's probably easy if you just see it for yourself. Ah, here we go, a job opening. An ambulance driver. That sounds like the perfect job. I click apply. And now all I have to do is wait. Oh, my interview couldn't have gone any better, and my first day went pretty great as well. I turned up early, every piece of paperwork filled in perfectly, my driver's license renewed, and my shoe shined, completely ready to go. The training was tough, but when you've done as many different jobs as I have, you learn to deal with all kinds of pressure pretty quickly. In the space of a day, I learned all the life-saving techniques, how to lift people, I'd raced around the training track and met the entire team of paramedics who I would be driving around. Over the course of that week, after I had mastered every single step, I felt like I had finally found my calling. Edgar, the ambulance driver. Yeah, that had a really nice ring to it. And do you want to know the best thing about this job? There was no music at all. Not a beat, not a note. Just the occasional beep of a machine in the back and the hum of the ambulance engine. What a dream! I'd even managed to go a couple of days without dancing at all. I'd woken up in peace, made my way to the hospital to carry on with my training in peace, and even gone to bed without having boogied down at all. I didn't want to get ahead of myself so early on, but I felt like this could be the job that stuck. Finally, I would be doing some good in the world and not just dancing. Maybe I was coming closer to never dancing again. When my first official day came, I was in such a good mood that even when I heard some rock music blasting through someone's car window on the way to work and danced in the middle of the street, I didn't feel annoyed or embarrassed. This morning, I felt like dancing. Good morning. I walked into the office and collected my new uniform. Morning, my new boss said, patting me on the shoulder. You ready to get started? There's no turning back now. Ready as I'll ever be. The smile, however, dropped from my face as quickly as it had appeared. As I watched my boss sit down at his desk, I saw him reach for the button of a radio. The moment felt like one hundred years. The click of the button echoed in my ears. The split second between it turning on and the sound coming through was all I had in which to react. My arm shot up in the air, pumping up and down and my legs started kicking out stepping forwards and backwards with the beat. But a miracle! My boss wasn't looking. He was staring at some papers, completely unaware that I was performing an elaborate dance routine right in front of him. Letting the rhythm control me, I managed to sway out of the door and into the changing room, which I hoped, prayed, was empty. The door shut behind me, the music disappeared, my arms fell to the side and my legs stopped flailing. Oh, that was a close one. Too close. But at least it was over with now, and nothing else could possibly be as bad as dancing in front of the boss. At least, that's what I thought. 
When I got changed and got myself ready, I hardly had time to finish my coffee before the first call came through. The paramedic next to me, Emily, a woman who had trained me in the week before, jumped up from her seat, flashed me a smile, and stuck out her hand. Time to get to work. This was it. Someone was in trouble, and it was up to me to save them. I followed Emily out the door, threw open the ambulance door, and jumped inside. We checked everything was in place, started the engine, and, the thing I'd been looking forward to most of all, turned on the siren. Oh, if only I had known. Like a lightning bolt, the rhythm hit me. The siren sounded like an intro to a funky song, and my body must have thought so too. Before I'd even moved an inch in the ambulance, I was moving my arms like a freestyle dancer. Quite rightly, there was no time to waste, so before I even knew what was going on, Emily had opened the door, pushed me out onto the tarmac and radioed for a replacement. They ran out in five seconds flat, and then, in a puff of dust, the ambulance squealed away. As they sped away, the siren still wailing, I continued to shuffle and spin and throw my limbs around, dancing all by myself in the parking bay. I heard the door open behind me. There was no avoiding him this time. Edgar, my boss said, as the siren died down and my dancing started to slow. Yes, sir. Will you step into my office, please? I got home, sitting in my lounge chair, slowly drinking my tea. It was Olivia, my downstairs neighbour, my friend too, and the only person I have ever thought about telling my secret to. I haven't, of course, because there's just no way of knowing how she would react. She might never talk to me again. I've come very close to telling girlfriends in the past, but they always seem to break up with me before I get the chance. And just like losing my jobs, they always have the same reason. All this dancing is just a bit weird, they all say. And if they think my dancing is weird, then it's not likely that they'd accept the fact that I don't even do it on purpose. Anyway, Olivia isn't my girlfriend. We're just friends. Just good friends. Not that I wouldn't like her to be my girlfriend. But she probably wouldn't even... Well, yeah, anyway, that's not important right now. Olivia came to say hi, and I invited her in for a cup of tea and a slice of homemade cake. Chocolate. Her favourite. You're such a gentleman. A good chef. Good looking. And you never seem to make a noise up here. How are you still single? Olivia said this a lot. I always said the same thing back. Just waiting for the right person. And did I tell you I started a new job today? Congratulations! She threw her arms up to hug me. But I lost it too. She let her arms drop again. Sorry to hear that. If you need some comfort, you can always come down and hang out with Buster. He's always happy to see you. She always knew what to say to make me feel a little better. It was a talent of hers. As we sat there together, enjoying the peace and quiet and a cup of tea, we started to think of ideas for what I could do next. And then, sitting up with a beaming smile, Olivia looked me in the eye. A friend of mine is a traffic controller. He's always saying that they need more people on the job. I'll introduce you. Hmm, I thought. Edgar the traffic controller. Yeah, that has a really nice ring to it.